you don't mind. That bag will stun. Don't stress me. Amen. My Bible fell down for today, and I can't just bring it forward here. Turn with me to Revelation 13, please, if you can. Revelation 13. As we pick up our teaching again on the 70 weeks of Daniel. And tonight, by the grace of God, we're going to be seeing it. I call it out, it's a Roman Catholic Church and the United States in prophecy. As we see the coming of the Lord drawing near and closer, we've got to prepare ourselves. Verse 1 And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. And we trust that the Lord will give us wisdom and understanding. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Tonight, quickly, before we go home, I will turn on that light again. Keep turning on our light every Sunday. We'll be seeing from Revelation 13, from verse 1 to 10, the Roman Catholic Church. And like I did say at the first, I think this is the fourth teaching we'll be having on this. Yeah. Almost every 20, 20 minutes, like that. And uh, I will appeal to you again, please, I'm not saying the Roman Catholic people themselves are devils and demons and antichrists. No. I'm talking about the system and the body itself, not the people inside. But of course, we're a member of any body, we're a part of part and partaker of whatever it is that they do. Roman Catholic Church, who are they according to the scriptures? Revelation 13, uh, chapter 13 and verse 1 to 10 expressly speaks about the Roman Catholic Church. And the book of Revelation is a book of signs and prophecy. If you want to understand the book of Revelation very well, you just turn to Daniel first. And read the book of Daniel. When you read the book of Daniel, you have a better grasp and understanding of what John the Revelator was seeing in the book of Revelation. But God, being over the science, God always hides things in simplicity. And unless you read in between the lines, the Bible will not, you will never see the word Roman Catholic Church in the Bible. But I'm going to give you 15 points, and you will at the end of the service answer me who is the Bible talking about from scriptures. According to history, you can Google it if you get home. The only church that is represented in the Bible are two churches. One is the Roman Catholic Church itself. The other is the one that the Bible refers to as the Bride of Christ. The book of Revelation is one of the most widely discussed and debated, debated books among both Bible students and secular scholars. In its pages are recorded the most dead warnings and vivid prophecies imaginable. And one of the most captivating yet misunderstood symbols in the apocalyptic writings of Revelation is chapter 13's Beast of the Sea, often referred to simply as the Beast. During the course of the vigil, we are going to have time for question and answer on this thing. So if you have questions or you are confused, don't worry, we'll treat it then, maybe for 30 minutes we'll take it, as long as the Lord permits. I'm going to read that from scriptures. If I have. You know, I, I was praying to that, and I said, God, just make the time go slow. <laughs> and it's going slow. Amen. Revelation, when you get to please read Revelation 13 from verse 1 to 10. Time will permit me to read everything and pick out one by one what I wanted to show us. Time will permit me. So we'll leave it. When you get to read it very from, from chapter 1, I mean chapter 13 from verse 1 to 18, you will understand better. In the Bible, the beast speaks, when you see the sign, like we said at the beginning, it's a, power, it's a symbol of power and authority. When you see a church, it's referring to, I mean, when you see a woman, it's referring to a church. That's how Bible is. The Bible identifies church as a female, as a woman. So when you see a woman, say the woman and the child is all speaking about a church. So in the book of Revelation 13, when you see the word, a harlot, it only means a, a prostitutious, if there's any English like that, church. A church that is a prostitute. And if it's a prostitute, it speaks at another chapter, it says, our daughters. That means that church has people that come out of it. And like Francis, Francis, please, if I'm saying anything about it, he's, he's a retired soldier from, from there. So please, if I'm saying anything that is wrong, I give you authority, just tell me that one is wrong. If I say anything that is outside the scripture, just tell me I'm wrong. I always tell him, I said, if you talk of Baptists and uh, what are they doing? Orthodox. Orthodox and all Methodists, all on the same mama. 
all of them, plus Kale, they are the same team. It's just the daughters that broke out. Wesley, John, how I many of us know John Wesley? Mm -hmm. Can I see your head? All right, so that is, you will know what I'm talking about. John Wesley was booted out for his beliefs against the Catholic Church. That was why he was booted out. He said, the just shall live by faith. So, no, to them, that was wrong. But that, even though it was in the Bible. So, I'm going to mention three, I mean, I said three, fifteen. So, I'll rush through quickly. When I finish, you tell me who I'm talking about. Revelation, just write it down. Revelation 17, 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's number one. Tell me which church is both a church and a city. Rome. Uh, Vatican. 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 God bless you there. Vatican. I've given you scripture, Revelation 17, 18. Revelation 17, verse 9. And here is the man which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman seated. He's seated upon seven mountains. Tell me which church is seated upon seven mountains. Revelation 17, 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a gold, golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. It's arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones. Which church is that? You don't know. What's the color for the uh, that you give? Uh, uh, purple. Bob, God, I don't know the difference because I've not been there. I used to tell my, my best friend has a, is a wedding in that church. I'm not heading there. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to judge them. I'm not heading there. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why if I have time at the end. What's the color for Father? White and purple. God bless you. Number four. Assess power over all the inhabitants of the earth. Revelation 13 verse 7. Just keep writing that now. You can check them when you get home. Tell me which church that every king on earth, when the Bible speaks about king, it also yeah. means modern day word for president and prime ministers. Tell me which church, whose pastor can move into any country without visa and the president of that country will bow before him. The Pope. Yeah. Pastor, Pastor Joseph. Pastor Joseph. Pastor Joseph. Pastor Time to come. No, 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 no. <laughs> I rose, number five, I rose within a densely populated area with cultural diversity. Revelation 17 and verse 15. Then he said to me, The waters which you saw, where the hallows is, are peoples, multitude, nations, and tongues. Tell me which church was created out of a people. In the times of old, when you want to conquer this, if this is a country, and outside is another country, when you want to conquer this country, what do you do? You lay siege, I can God bless you, uh -huh. and fight, and conquer with the edge of the sword, right? Yeah. That is how it was. The Roman Catholic Church, or I mean, the Vatican never did that. It was carved out, I've forgotten the name of that treaty, is it the Vespian Treaty? Vespian Treaty, that created the Roman Catholic Church, and gave auto autonomy, right? Is that autonomy they call it? By, from the Italian government to the, to, the, to the Vatican. That is the only church that is both a church and a country at the same time. That's the only church. That's the only church. And it was created out of a country. Nobody fought any war to create the Vatican City or the Vatican country as well, or Rome as we know it. Nobody. Nobody. It was given by a decree and a treaty, an agreement between, I forgot the name of that Italian president or prime minister, that agreed with the, what was the name of that pope. I can't remember the name of the pope. It was agreed between them, a treaty was signed, and that was how they were granted autonomy. Okay, I can keep running. It's 15. I just want to prove to you by the scriptures. Completely, completely eradicated three other kingdoms when it's rising to power. That's Daniel 7 and verse 8. I'm giving you scriptures when the Bible speaks about this Roman Catholic Church. Number 7. Makes war with the saints. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. That's uh, Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with, at her with great Admiration, Revelation 17, 6. Tell me which church has been drunk with the blood of so-called Christians. 63, 63 or 68 million? 68 million. Pope John Paul, before he died, kept apologizing and apologizing till he died. Oga, what's the last one? Benedict. He kept apologizing and apologizing. Anybody know why they were apologizing? They killed saints! They killed people that refused to be Catholics. People that confessed to be Christian. They were killed. Till tomorrow, historians 
and say there are still they are still digging out bones of people that were either buried alive or killed or hung from 1798 AD till date. Jews included, even in the city of Odessa. Spain, all over Europe, people were killed just because they refused to adhere by the doctrines of Catholicism. They have that in their hands. Even the present Pope is still apologizing. That's next word with the sins. Number eight, as a single man acting and speaking for the whole world, for them, for the whole of them, you will see that in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 8. It's the only church where one man speaks for them, both as president and pastor at the same time. This one is the most, this, this is the one that I, I personally don't, don't like. The sovereign of this kingdom exalts himself as high as Jehovah God. Anybody have a paper? Can you give me a paper? In the place, you don't need that, right? In the Vatican, I, 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 I showed uh, this to Francis before. In the Vatican, there are many names for the Pope. I wrote some of them here. Is it that called the Pope? Vicar of Christ, Vicar of Peter, Holy Father, Bishop of Rome, Servant of the Servants of God, Supreme Pastor, His Holiness, the Rock, Supreme Pontiff. The Bible said that rock that followed them was Christ. He's claiming he's the rock. Supreme Pontiff, Father of Kings, but Jesus is the King of Kings. Oh. Governor of the world, successor of Peter, Shepherd of the universe, Universal Church, etc. I didn't write all of them, but I underline some. Vicar of Christ. In Roman Catholic, the Vicar of Christ is called, is trans translated as in the, in the stead of the Son of God. And the Bible says he exalts himself, and let me see that scripture, above all that is called God. Second Thessalonians. Yeah, Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3 to 4. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except they come a falling away first, and that man of sin. That's the Antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition. Verse 4. Who opposed and exalted, exalted himself above all that is God called God, all that is worship, so that he as God sits, listen, you know, he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Vicarious uh, Philide that is written on the throne of the Papa. What does he mean? In Rome, where the church is, Roman, Roman, what we call in English Roman numerals, mm -hmm. yeah, is what's their alphabet and their figure. On his throne, this is what is written. V in Roman figure is what? I, I. I is what? One. One. C is what? Hundred. A is what? Not is not there. There's no A, so zero. R there's no R in Roman Roman figure. I is what? Five. five. V U is the same thing as V, so it's five. What did I write? I, that's I, one. I, U is five. S, no S. F, no F. I, one. L is what? Fifty, right? Yeah, fifty. L is another fifty. I is another one. D is five hundred, if I'm correct. E is what? No E. I is what? One. Five plus one, six. Six, one, oh, six. One, oh, seven. One, twelve. One, thirteen. One, fourteen. One, fifteen. One, fifteen plus fifty. One, sixty-five. One, sixty. 166 rather. 166 plus 500. That's what you get. I can time up and there are other names of the Pope that if you sum up the so total, it equals to 66. Big time. Other titles of the Pope. Just sum it up in Roman figure that you know. Sum it up to whatever uh, nom no, English numerals that you know. You get a 666. The Bible says this church, Harlot, oh my God, help me. I can't run to do this. This church has changed times and calendars, and the only church that boasts that their authority is found that in their ability to have changed the human calendar. God uses what um, English people call lunar calendar. Sunday is not a day of worship. That is why I, I pity Christians that come to church say because it's Sunday and they go to church. No, we don't worship because it's Sunday. We worship God every day. When I set aside a day to say this day is unto the Lord, the day of Sabbath is a Saturday. 
if you follow. But the church, even the US, has consigned a law recently through the Papa, through the Pope, let me put it in the language we know, through the Pope, before he retired, Benedict, Benedict convinced Oga Obama that Sunday should be made compulsorily a day of free of work. Now, the only city country in the whole world where state and religion are mixed together is the Vatican. State and religion are not mixed together. That's the only country in the whole world that is mixed state and religion together. But a country, I mean, uh, yeah, a country or a president or the leader of a country trying to change religious laws is only found in Vatican. And that is why they've perfectedly been able to change a day of worship from being Sunday to a, a Saturday. Catholics boast about that, real Catholics. They both that they are, they are the ones that have the ability to do that. I want to see the 15th. Let me jump. The Bible says, was mortally wounded, but ultimately recovered. This is where I will prove to you by history and Bible that it was, they were wounded. During the time that Titus the Vespian, if that is the name of that uh, French general, went into, po into the Vatican, is, is it 19, 1759 or 98? When he went to, the Rome, to, to Rome and captured the Pope, the Roman Catholic Church by scriptures that I just read was mortally wounded. And the Bible says in one scripture, it says, Watch, for he that leadeth captive is being led captive. They were the superior power of the world after the fall of the Roman Empire. They ruled the world with a word of iron. Their word was law. The word of the Pope was law in any country on earth. No church, no church, got me anywhere. No church has a following as large as the Catholic Church, over one billion. Am I correct? Yeah. No church. No church, no country can boast they have all the churches in the world. But every country can boast they have at least one Catholic Church. One. Yeah. Every country on planet Earth. I will, maybe at the vision we will have more time to prove more things by scripture. But let me just read out the scriptures. Daniel 7.25, Revelation 13.5, Revelation 13.10, Revelation 13.3. That's the one I just said. I'm too fast. Revelation 13.5, Daniel 7.25, Revelation 13.5, Revelation 13.10, Revelation 13.3. See those scriptures, and I believe the Lord will give you understanding. Amen. When you go to the part, other part of Revelation 13, now watch. What I'm trying to tell us is, the, I believe God was the one sitting here, three, four, no, before anniversary. And I said, Israel will make, and you were helping me define preemptive. Did it happen last week? Yes. God bless you. I said, Israel, by scriptures, will make a preemptive strike that would change the game war plan for the whole world. Anything happening in Israel, in US, in the Roman Catholic Church, in Europe, has to do with you and I, whether you like it or not. I say, no, can sign you on a man at the church. Sing, go house. A lie, they sign you. Say, if they like, let them bomb, let them bomb. He concern you, concern me. Whether you like it or not. Except you are living in Pluto. You are not living on planet Earth. Except that. It concerns you and I. And I've proof to you the Roman Catholic Church and the parts they will play. I can't go to them. The parts they will play in end time prophecies. Sorry. In end time prophecies, the parts they will play. I will show you the United States. Revelation 13 from verse 10 to 18, if I'm correct. When you get home, you can read it. But the Bible says this country was brought out of uh, the land. Where's my bag? Please pardon my tongue, Bible, please. <laughs> it just fell down this on my way in here. It just came back. Revelation 13, I'll read it for emphasis sake. 13 and verse 10. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Amen. We are going to identify the U.S. by this. The second beast came, up, came after the first beast. And that's verse 11 I just read. In 538 AD, the church was defeated. The church defeated its last Aryan opponent, the Orthodox. That's what they are called. Between 538 AD 
1798 AD, when the Pope was arrested and, and taken captive, but well, that was when the Roman Catholic Church received the deadly wound that was spoken of in Revelation. And it was mortally wounded in 1798 AD. Between 538 and 1798 AD, there are 1260 years period, which Revelation 12 6 speaks about. Three and a half years. 1260 exactly years in between. But in between those periods, we didn't see it before coming there, which we'll see later. Revelation 12 speaks about Israel, Jesus. The dragon, which is the devil, and the Antichrist. Who are they? We we'll see the Revelation to some other time. But let's see the United States. This first beast, the first beast, which is the Pope, received his deadly wound in 1798. So the second beast must have come at about that time. And the only country that came out of the sea, the sea is, is tongues and peoples. When the Bible speaks about sea, we will we establish that at the beginning, right? But when the Bible says out of the land, it means out of a sparsely populated area. A sparsely populated area. And the Bible says that second beast came into existence almost at the time of the receiving of the deadly wound of the first beast, which is the church, Roman Catholic Church. The only country, according to history, that was founded at about that time is the United States of America. Watch. The United States of America was created in uh, where's it? 1776. No other country was formed at that period. They got independence in 1776, revolution between 1775 and 1783. They become a federal, federal government in 1787. The USA was formed in a sparsely populated area. It was discovered. It was not. It was discovered. Do you know that the United States, like the Roman Catholic Church, they didn't fight. What's the name of that founder? Christopher what? Do you know that they didn't fight any war to start the United States? He just saw a sparsely populated land, and that was how the United States started. Every other country fought for independence. Every other country fought in the times of old by the sword, by gun, by tank to create themselves, but not the United States. It was formed. The U.S. has two separate powers founded on Christian principles. I've said this many times. The only reason why the U.S. prospered the way they are till today is because their constitution was founded on the word of God. Uh, but as soon as they began to turn their back on God, God also began to turn his back on them. That's an example for you. And that you turn your back on God, God will turn his back on you. Simple and short. The church and state are separated in the United States by the Constitution. It is a republic. And a republic means a king without a kingdom. It's like the Protestant Roman Catholic Church. A church without a pope. That's what the United States is. It has two lamb like according to Revelation 13, when you get to read it. It has two lamb like horn. The lamb like one, you know, they call Jesus the lamb of God. But the Bible says he speaks as a dragon. But he has on like that of a lamb. He has, he says he's gentle. But he's a gentle rattlesnake. He's a gentle rattlesnake. He speaks hey, freedom for all. The first country that started asylum was the United States. But today, their constitutional rights are being one by one taken away from them. Now they don't want them to buy one anymore. You will see why they don't want them to buy one when, I, when we see them there. Why do you, Obama doesn't want them to buy guns, to own guns anymore. Why he wants to collect the guns they have, you will know why. Because the United States soldiers are bringing in guns. And when the Antichrist starts, they will molest people and kill people and torment people, but you have weapons to reply them back. The oppression is coming soon. My prayer is that we will make the rapture. Amen. Because when it comes, the good that will affect most is those that claim to be Christians. People will be devil be king. And then, uh, all the, uh, we don't say we devil be king. But those of us that claim to be Christian, <laughs> special detention camp in hell, God forbid. I will leave the United States there, time will permit me to wrap up. But whatever the case, next week, Friday, we have time. If you have questions so far about all that we've seen about the European Union, the Israel, Russia, and all the parts that we've mentioned in the past, and you have, uh, what's happening, doubt about anything. Come with the questions and the videos. After prayers and the preaching of the word, we'll have time to see them. But suffice it to say tonight, friends, every event that you see in the United States, on CNN, every event you see, every angle you see, the, uh, excuse me, the Pope turning with the Church of Rome has to do with you and I. It has a lot to do with you and I. Every corner you see them turning, and the nation of Israel. And 
Even more so, when they've done that preemptive strike, we're talking about five, six weeks ago. They've done it. And you know the funny part? Israel have refused to confirm or deny whether they shot that bomb. <laughs> I don't know if people understand what I just said. They will never confirm or deny. They will never confirm or deny. But whatever is happening there has got to do with you and I. The Bible says when you see the fig tree coming back to life, and all nations of the earth bombing them and threatening them, know that your redemption is near. Yeah. I told us two Fridays ago, God, that impression that uh, you don't know when the Son of Man will come. We know it. The only thing is you don't know the date, the month, the year, and the o'clock. That's the only thing. But we know it's this period because the signs around the earth and they all are pointing towards the sky that the whole world should watch for the Son of Man is already coming. Are we ready for the coming of the Lord? All these things I'm reading and jumping up and down is not for us to inform us. I'm not trying to tell us that this church is... Or we're trying to black, uh, paint another church black. Don't go to that church. No, 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 please. That's not what this church is doing. We are telling you that the signs are ready. Like I said three weeks ago, uh, what's it called? Illuminati. Their signs are flashing upon on, on our faces every, every day on the news. Every day on uh, adv advertorials. I was asking Francis the other day, why can't they just sell soap without putting a woman? <laughs> Once a naked woman with her breast out advertise soap, and you see Illuminati sign in the other, but you won't know. You won't know. That is how the signs of Jesus is coming. is flashing on our faces, right on CNN, BBC, and even on the street out there. The Bible says in the last that it was in the days of Sodom and in the days of Noah. People were walking naked. <laughs> ah, you don't know. That's how when you come naked. I, I believe the ushers of our life come in naked. <laughs> Say God is looking at your heart. So you are coming naked. Now <laughs> 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 God is looking at your heart. Please help me. I will slap that demon out of you. I won't pray. I slap. May the Lord help us. Amen. May the Lord help us. Amen. As we see the coming of the Lord fast approaching, we will pray that the Lord will prepare us Himself Amen. and give us grace to live a life that when He comes, we will not be ashamed. Amen. Let's give God praise as we rise to our feet.